Are you looking for the right time to harvest your beets? In this video, I'm going to show you some simple ways on how to harvest and store your beets. Hi, this is Jeremy Stark here from Green Thumb Gardener, here to give you some tips, tutorials, and reviews for all your gardening needs. In today's video, we're going to go over a very simple way on how to know when to harvest your beets. We're also going to give you some tips on how to store them and probably the best way to make them last throughout the, throughout the winter if you'd like. But before we get started, if you could, please give us a green thumbs up. Let us know that we're making great videos for you. Also, if you could, hit the subscribe button. It's down there somewhere, I think. Um, hit the bell also so you get notified of any new videos that we do have. If you want to save some money, take a look at above. I'm going to give you a link and that's going to give you a, uh, a bunch of different hacks that can save you money in the garden. I've saved uh, probably roughly you know, anywhere from three dollars to $400, $3,500 every year using these same simple hacks. So check that out. But now that we get that out of the way, let's get right into it. There's a couple of different ways to harvest your beets. You know, and I, I don't mean like, uh, you know, just literally pulling them out of the ground way. But uh, some people will actually grow beets for their, their leafy greens. Um, these are really good. To, um, to, to put in your cooking uh, as far as to get some greens. Uh, they're sort of like a, almost like a kale, uh, maybe Swiss chard, they're a little bit more, I, I particularly, I'm not too fond of them, but they're a little bit more bitter, so you have to cook them up. You can put these in your smoothies and things, so some people like to harvest the greens. So if you're still growing these and you're not, you know, you're not ready to pick them, pick the actual root itself you can you can harvest the leaves and what you do is grab the outer leaves of these so all that I would do is just grab you, know, you can use a knife and cut it off and I would grab just the leaf on the outer edge so I'd grab all of it. you do want to leave the inner leaves in there because that's how it's gonna grow the, the actual root itself and then usually the edible part is you just take off the stem so you can kind of rip off the whole stem of this like this and this is kind of the edible greens that, that most people would eat. So that's, that's one way to harvest, uh, harvest your beets. Obviously the other way is, is for the root itself. And this is, this is my favorite part here because I love beets. Beets are one of my favorite vegetables to grow. Knowing the best time to, 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 to harvest them is you want to look and sometimes if you dig away the dirt, you can see where the root, where just the with the actual root, and this might be really far down. Yeah, this is actually far down. But sometimes what you'll see is you'll you'll actually see the the top of the the bead itself, and you can get an idea of how big it is from there if you kind of make a little circumference around it. And that way that you don't have to pull it up if it's not ready. Um, you can pull them up when they're smaller. You can leave them in there until they get a little bit larger. Uh, they are a cool weather vegetable, so I wouldn't leave them in there all summer. I would definitely take them out. You can leave these over the winter. That's one of the good things about this is that you can, if you have a, if you're living a, a, a zone that's not, doesn't get too freezing, I would say anything above, you know, Massachusetts, you know, kind of up that area, New England, anything further north of that, you're gonna have to really put a lot of, um, you know, kind of ground covering over it. Uh, if you want to leave them in the, during the winter time. Mainly you can, you know, most, most gardens you can just put some leaves over it and it'll be fine and you just pick it when you want it. And it'll be, it actually tastes a lot better during the winter because they're, they're, they like the cold weather. But if you're, if these are your spring batch, then I wouldn't leave them in here over the summer because what will happen is they'll eventually, they're gonna um, get a little bit, you know, different taste to it and then you might not particularly like the taste. It could be a little bit bitter. Um, I haven't really left any in, so I can't I can't really say what they taste like, but I know that it's not, they're much better when, when the cooler weather is here. One way I like to just, you know, make sure as I first, I check everything around it just to make sure it's big enough. And if this one is big enough, then what I'm gonna do is just grab a hold of the root. And I'm just gonna pull it right up on here. And as you can see, this is a pretty good size one. Uh, these are, I think, I think these are the Detroit ones. So they are, they are red. Um, you know, depending on how big, I mean, this is, this is a good size. I particularly don't like the really big ones. I prefer the small ones because they're, they just seem to taste better. You can roast them up and put them in your salad. And then if you want, another thing you can do is, is if you want to store these, 
uh, for the winter. As I said, um, one thing you can do is leave them right in your garden. If you have them in a, an actual raised bed or a traditional garden, and it's getting ready to, you know, maybe have some frost that is coming, what I would do is um, you can either put some hay over it so that it, it just covers just the, 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 the leaf stalks because the root will be still down. They might die off a little bit, but if you cover it enough, it's going to insulate the ground a little bit so that it makes it easier for you to pull it out and the, the ground itself might not freeze at that point. Another good thing, um, what I would do is in my area where I live in North Carolina in Zone 7D, it does, we do get some frost and it does, you know, but I, I think um, all I need is to have a layer of leaves just basically covering everything. And I'll still leave the stalks uh, exposed so I kind of know where they are if I did put them in there. But I would just do that and just cover it up with leaves. It's actually better to leave it in the ground during the winter if you can because it will store longer in here and won't spoil. But if you did have to take them up and you want to put them in a, um, you know, over the winter you want to store them and so you don't have to use all of them and say you have a really big harvest, um, you can also put them in uh, sand and very just keep it very moist. Uh, not not damp or wet, but just enough so it's not dried out. So basically you pack them in there in a nice dark, cool area like your basement is probably the best place for that. They will last a lot longer in there. The other thing you can do is pickle them. You know, if you want to preserve these, uh, these are great. These are great pickles. You know, roast them up and pickle them if you want. And they will store pretty pretty long in there if they, if they last. They don't really last too long in my house. But those are some ways that you can harvest beets and also um, store them for the long haul. But let me know what you do. Um, put it note in the comment. I'd love to know what, what else you do to store your beets and how you harvest them, how you prefer them. Let me know what other kind of beets you guys like. I'd love to hear from you. Well, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you could, please give us a green thumbs up. Let us know that we're making great videos for you. Also, if you could, hit the bell. Hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell so you get notified of any new videos that we do have. Um, also, we do have a website called gardenofthumb.com where we have lots of tips out there and in special we actually have a uh, we have an article that has all the different types of beets out there that you can imagine like so all the different varieties of beets. I'll post a link in the, in the des um, description below so you can find that article. But as always, I'll see you in the next video.